Welcome to the Keeping It Simple series. My name is Sean. This is your sample lecture here on the brachial plexus. Let's get started. We're going to start by talking about the upper extremity and the nerves. The brachial plexus extends from C5 to T1. That's C5 to T1. So we have C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. So the way to do it is take your hand out, take your thumb, that's C5, C6, C7, C8, T1. So you take your hand out and you go from C5 to T1 on your hand, starting with the thumb, ending with your pinky. Now I see lots of mnemonics for the brachial plexus. What we did, we decided to stick with the theme of drinking and alcohol for these mnemonics. So we're going to go ahead and get started with our mnemonic. All right, reach to drink cold beer. Repeat after me. Reach to drink cold beer. Reach to drink cold beer. Perfect. Reach to drink cold beer. Roots, trunks, divisions, cords, branches. Ready? Roots. Roots. Roots, trunks. Trunks. Roots, trunks, divisions. Roots, trunks, divisions, cords, branches, one at a time. Roots, Roots trunks, trunks, divisions, divisions cords, cords, branches. branches. Reach to drink cold beer, your R, T, D, C, B. Roots, trunks, divisions, cords, branches. Now that we've talked about it, let's talk about how to draw it and we'll see how it all fits in. The easiest way to draw the brachial plexus is to start on a sheet of paper and write from C5 down to T1 on the left side, just like that. C5, C6, C7, C8, T1. All right. Then you're going to draw three Y's. All right. The Y in the middle faces the opposite direction. So you're going to draw three Y's. The Y in the middle faces the opposite direction. So you write down C5 or T1 and you draw three Y's. After you draw the three Y's, you're going to draw two E's. Okay. So three Y's and two E's. Remember, three Y's, the Y in the middle faces the opposite direction, and then you have two E's. Once you draw the three Y's and the two E's, you're going to throw in an X as such, in between C6 and C7. Then you're going to come in and label using our mnemonic that we said reach to drink cold beer, roots, trunks, divisions, cords, branches. So you have three Y's, two E's, and our mnemonic on top, and we fill in roots, trunks, divisions, cords, branches. Reach to drink cold beer. Now let's talk about the individual parts of the brachial plexus. We have another mnemonic here, and this one's also related to alcohol, because I wanted to keep the theme consistent. So if you drink, if you reach to drink enough cold beer, you might have to urinate, right? So, most alcoholics must really urinate. Repeat after me. Most alcoholics must really urinate. Most alcoholics must really urinate. Excellent. Well done. So most alcoholics must really urinate. So once you figure that out, you see, you're going to draw the things in. You're going to write the uh, nerves down from top to bottom, going zigzag. So every time you see a break, you're going to write down the name of the nerve. So start with musculocutaneous, go to axillary, Median, radial, ulnar. So that's the mnemonic. Most alcoholics must really urinate. Musculocutaneous, axillary, median, radial, radial, and ulnar. Now don't worry about all those right now because we're going to do them one at a time. I'm just showing it to you here all together, but we're going to break it down and go one step at a time. The one thing you probably see on the left side here is a, is a line and it says long thoracic nerve. It's from C5, C6, and C7. Everybody's probably heard, you know, five, six, seven, wings to heaven. Well, the reason they say that is because if you injure your long thoracic nerve, you have winging of the scapula. So just know that here. We're going to talk about it in detail later. From C5, C6, C7, you've drawn a line, and that is your long thoracic nerve. So in, in summary, you've talked about reach to drink cold beer, your roots, trunks, divisions, cores, branches. You drew three Ys and two Es and an X, right? And then you drew a line for the long thoracic nerve. We talked about the mnemonic. Most alcoholics must really urinate, so let's talk about that M. Most. And the most alcoholics must really urinate. The first M stands for your musculocutaneous nerve, and you see it in green there on your slide. The musculocutaneous nerve, the course of this nerve is in your anterior arm, and it exits laterally in your forearm. The course of this nerve is your anterior arm, and it exits in your lateral forearm. Anterior arm is where it is, but the motor is what I want you to focus on. It's the anterior flexor compartment of your arm. It's the anterior what? Flexor. Excellent. Anterior? Flexor. It's the anterior flexor compartment of your arm, and you'll see where that comes into play here in a second. Sensory is pretty straightforward. It's your arm and lateral forearm. But check this out. Musculocutaneous kind of sounds like that word muscle, right? Spelled similarly. So if you injure your musculocutaneous nerve, you can't flex your elbow and show off your muscles. Okay? Remember we talked about how it motor supplies the anterior flexor compartment of your arm. So if you injure your musculocutaneous nerve, which runs in the anterior part of your arm, if you injure this nerve that sounds like muscle, looks like muscle, you can't flex your, you can't flex and show them your muscles, okay? So injury to the musculocutaneous nerves means you cannot flex elbow. 
Excellent. You can't flex your? Elbow. And the nerve is? Musculocutaneous, and it means you can't flex your elbow. All right. Most alcoholics must really urinate. A, for axillary. Let's talk about the axillary nerve. The axillary nerve runs posterior to the surgical neck of the humerus. What part of the humerus is the surgical neck? What part of the humerus? Surgical what neck. part of the humerus? Surgical the neck. surgical neck. And the nerve is? Axillary. And it runs to, next to what? Surgical neck. surgical neck. It runs behind the surgical neck. So this axillary nerve is posterior to the surgical neck of the humerus. Now, motor supply to two muscles. Your deltoid and teres minor. Your deltoid and? Teres, teres minor and? Delta. Axillary nerve supplies two muscles. Your deltoid and? Teres, teres minor and? Delta. And what part of the humerus is it behind? The surgical neck. The surgical neck. Axillary nerve is behind the surgical neck of your humerus. It supplies your deltoid and your teres minor. Sensory. Well, axilla is under, it's your armpit, right? So it's pretty simple. Sensory is your shoulder. Sensory is your shoulder. Now, the reason why I kept having you say surgical neck, surgical neck, surgical neck is because it's a great clinical question for them to ask you, and they will. Injury is surgical neck fracture. So if you have a surgical neck fracture, you can injure your axillary nerve. Your axillary nerve, when injured, will prevent you from abducting your arm. What's abducting your arm? Well, abduct. If, you, if a girl gets abducted, if a kid gets abducted, that means they're taken away from home. Abducting your arm, therefore, means you're taking it away from your body. Okay? So this is abduction of your arm. This is going to prevent abduction from 15 degrees to 90 degrees. From 15 to 90. The axillary nerve is responsible for abduction from 15 to 90. From 15 to? 90. The nerve is? And is abduction from what to what? 15 to 90. Does abduction from 15 to 90. From 15 to 90. From? 15 to 90. Excellent. Know that because they like to ask you. Okay? And they won't say 15 to 90. They might describe it. Okay? So 15 to 90 is from here to here. All right? So your axillary nerve, we said it runs posterior to your surgical neck of the humerus. Motor, deltoid, and teres minor, sensory to your shoulder. And when that nerve is injured in a surgical neck fracture, it can lead to loss of abduction from 15 degrees to 90 degrees. Most alcoholics must really urinate. We're on the second M now. This is probably the, one of the most important nerves of the brachial plexus, your median nerve. Okay? Your median nerve. The median nerve runs anterior to your elbow, and it supplies and passes between your pronator teres muscle. Okay? All that's not all important. I just want you to know that it runs anterior to your elbow. It runs anterior to your? Elbow. The median nerve runs anterior to your? Elbow. elbow. And it runs in between the two heads of your pronator teres muscle. Well, pay attention because like I said, this is one of the most important nerves of the brachial plexus. Not only for exams, but also in clinical practice. And you'll see that in a second. Motor. In your forearm, it, is, it supplies your lateral flexors of the wrist. The lateral flexors of the wrist. The lateral? Flexors of the? Wrist. The lateral? Flexors of the? Wrist. And the nerve is? Medium. The median nerve supplies the lateral flexors of your wrist. In your hand, it supplies your two lateral lumbricals. Your two lateral lumbricals. Your two? Lateral lumbricals. Excellent. So you have motor in your forearm to your flexors of your wrist. In your hand, two lateral lumbricals. And your thenar eminence. Your thenar eminence, TH, is next to your TH thumb. Okay, so thumb TH, thenar TH. Your thenar eminence is next to your thumb. And that's important. So I'm going to tell you again. It supplies your thenar eminence. Which eminence? Thenar. Which one? Thenar. Excellent. Your thenar eminence via a branch called the recurrent branch. Thenar ends in R. Recurrent starts with R. The median nerve has a branch called the recurrent branch which supplies the thenar eminence. Which branch of the median nerve supplies your thenar eminence? Recurrent. Which branch? Recurrent. Which branch of the median nerve supplies your thenar eminence? Recurrent branch of your median nerve. Sensory. Now this is important and they're going to ask you this. Going to have you, they're going to have you distinguish this between your ulnar nerve or the radial nerve. So pay attention. So the median nerve, sensory supplies your lateral three and one half fingers, the palmar part and the superior dorsal aspect. What does that mean? Your fingertips. Fingertips. Okay. So palmar aspect, lateral three and one half fingers, and superior dorsal aspect, which is your fingertips of those same fingers. Injury. Three types of injury that can occur to your median nerve. Carpal tunnel syndrome, supracondylar fracture of your humerus, and lunate dislocation. So, we're going to repeat these things in order. Carpal tunnel. Carpal tunnel. Supracondylar fracture. Supracondylar fracture. Lunate. Lunate. Excellent. So, carpal tunnel syndrome, supracondylar fracture, as well as lunate dislocation. What happens when it gets injured? 
Median nerve injury results in thenar atrophy. We said that the recurrent branch of the median nerve supplies your thenar eminence. So if you injure your median nerve, you're going to have thenar atrophy. You're also going to have loss of thumb opposition. Now, you're going to have median claw hand. Now, there's two types of median claw hand. It can get a little confusing. Let's see if you can follow me. So you have distal lesion or proximal lesion. Distal means further away, proximal means higher up. So as the distal lesion is in your hand after you receive innervation for your forearm muscles and you lose your two lateral lumbricals, okay? So you ask your patient here to open your hand. So distal D-O, open your hands, D-O. Distal, open your hands, okay? You're gonna open your hands and your second and third digit are gonna stay flexed. Your second and third digit are gonna stay flexed and it's gonna look like this. All right, proximal lesion now. The proximal lesion is in the arm or upper forearm, therefore we lose muscles that innervate the flexors of the fingers. So this is what happens. I try to punch somebody, try to make a fist to punch somebody, but instead you end up blessing them, okay? Instead you end up blessing them and it looks like this. So you're gonna lose your two lateral lumbricals, you're gonna lose uh, loss of muscles of thumb opposition, and when a patient makes a fist, the lateral lumbricals will stay extended as well as the thumb. My description sounds complicated, but just take a look at how it looks. And the proximal lesion is different from the ulnar lesion because in the, in the ulnar claw hand, the thumb can still flex, but in the proximal lesion to the median nerve, medial claw hand, proximal medial claw hand, your thumb cannot flex. In ulnar claw hand, it can. And once again, the proximal lesion of the median nerve looks like this. The distal lesion of the median nerve looks like this. Now, we talked about the injury. We talked about carpal tunnel syndrome with the median nerve. Well, what happens? What causes it? Tendinitis of flexor retinaculum. Tendinitis of your flexor retinaculum due to overuse. Tendinitis of a ligament called a flexor retinaculum. The ligament's name is flexor retinaculum. The name of the ligament is? Flexor retinaculum. Flexor? Excellent, because they might not ask you median nerve. It's too easy. They might ask you this, so you know it now, right? So that leads to median nerve entrapment, and you'll see the following findings. Numbness, tingling, sensory loss, or atrophy or atrophy of your thenar eminence. We already talked about the thenar eminence. I want to ask you one more time, what branch of the median nerve innervates your thenar eminence? Recurrent. The recurrent branch of your median nerve supplies your thenar eminence. So when that median nerve gets injured, that thenar eminence no longer has the supply, so it'll become atrophic, it'll flatten out. You also see numbness and tingling or sensory loss. So you'll see a lot of people who use, use their wrist too much, right? Video game players, people who type a lot. Okay, so if you have bilateral carpal tunnel syndrome, you're gonna suspect one of the following things. Mnemonic is median trap. Repeat after me, median trap. Median trap. Median trap. Median trap. Let's talk about it together. M for myxodema, E for edema, D for diabetes. M for? Myxodema. E for? Edema. D for? Diabetes. Excellent, I-A-N, idiopathic, acromegaly. N, I for? Idiopathic. A for? Acromegaly. N for? Neopathic. Let's do all the median together, M for? E4, Edema. D4, Diabetes. I4, Idiopathy. A4, Acrobatic. N4, Neoplasm. Trap, we got medium, now it's time for trap. T for trauma, R for rheumatoid arthritis, A for amyloidosis, and P for pregnancy. Trap, T4, trauma. R4, rheumatoid arthritis, A4, amyloidosis. and P4, pregnancy. Excellent. Most alcoholics must really urinate. Most alcoholics must really urinate. Now we're on the R and the R stands for radial. So we did musculocutaneous, we did axillary, we did medium. Now it's time for radial. Your radial nerve, simple, the radial groove in your humerus. That's the posterior part of your humerus. It's even called a radial groove, and that's where your radial nerve is. It's motored to three things. Triceps, brachioradialis, extensions of your wrist. Triceps. 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 Brachioradialis. Brachioradialis. Extensors of the wrist. What part of the wrist? Extensors. What part of the wrist? So triceps, brachioradialis, and extensions of your wrist are all supplied by this radial nerve which runs in the posterior part of your humerus in a groove called the radial groove. Sensory supply, radial nerve has sensory supply are two parts. Your posterior arm and forearm, the back of your arm and forearm, posterior arm and forearm, and you should know that because it runs in the posterior part of your humerus. So it's in the back and it's sensory supply to your arm and your forearm. Also, we talked about the median nerve being the sensory supply to your lateral fingertips of your three and one half fingers, this is below your fingertips. So the median nerve to the fingertips, the radial nerve does below the fingertips. What does the fingertips? Medium. Medium. What does below the fingertip? Medium. What did fingertip? Medium. What does below fingertip? Medium. Excellent. So how do you injure the radial nerve? You can 
fracture the body of your humerus. We talked about the surgical neck earlier. That was separate. This is now the body of your humerus. What part of the humerus? Body. So radial nerve can be injured in fracture of the body of your humerus, as well as what we call Saturday night palsy, which is compression of the nerve in your axilla. Compression of nerve in your axilla, as well as using crutches, which are improperly adjusted. So three things. Fracturing what part of the humerus? The body. the body. And then we have Saturday night palsy, which is just compression of your nerve in your axilla, as well as using improperly adjusted crutches. Now, when you injure your radial nerve, you get wrist drop. Radial nerve, wrist drop. Radial nerve, wrist drop. radial nerve, wrist radial nerve. Radial nerve. Wrist drop. Excellent. Most alcoholics must really urinate to the last part. You, ulnar, your ulnar nerve. Your ulnar nerve is posterior to your medial epicondyle. Posterior to your medial epicondyle. You'll see a picture of it in a second. It's posterior to? Medial epicondyle. Posterior to? Medial epicondyle. Superficial to the flexor retinaculum ligament. Okay, and we talked about that when we talked about the median nerve just a second ago. Motor. Well, what does the ulnar nerve supply? It innervates the medial flexors of your wrist. The medial? Flexors. The medial? Flexors. flexors of your wrist. Now we talked about the median nerve, how it supplies your thenar eminence, right? So next to your thenar eminence, we have the hypothenar eminence, and the hypothenar eminence is supplied by your ulnar nerve. So TH for thenar, TH for thumb. Thenar eminence is by your thumb. This is your hypothenar eminence. So your hypothenar eminence and your third and fourth lumbricals. Which lumbricals? Third and fourth. Which lumbricals? Third and fourth. Which lumbricals? Third and fourth. Third and fourth. So motor we have so far, medial flexors of your wrist, hypothenar eminence third and fourth lumbricals, and all the interosseous muscles of your hand. Now, sensory. Pay attention, this is important. This is where it distinguishes it from the median nerve. This is sensory to your dorsal and palmar aspect of your hand for your medial one and a half fingers. This is what's important with the ulnar nerves. This is what I want to talk about. I said it runs by the medial epicondyle, right? So if you fracture your medial epicondyle, you can injure your medial nerve. So you can fracture your medial epicondyle, lead to injury of the ulnar nerve, as well as fracture of the hook of hamate. So two things, medial epicondyle fracture and fracture of the hook of hamate. This results in the inability to abduct or adduct your fingers. It results in the inability for you to adduct or abduct your fingers. You cannot abduct them, you cannot adduct them. Because the ulnar nerve supplies the hypothenar eminence, you're going to have hypothenar atrophy and you're going to have ulnar claw hand. What's ulnar claw hand? Ulnar open. So, you're going to have loss of your medial lumbricals. Your patient tries to open the hand and they cannot extend the fourth and fifth digits. Ulnar claw hand, you cannot extend the fourth and fifth digits. The ulnar claw hand, you cannot extend the fourth and fifth digits, but you can still flex your thumb. Okay? All right? So, median nerve is thenar atrophy. This is hypothenar atrophy. This is your ulnar nerve. So, we talked about the nerves. We talked about the nerves injuries. Let's talk about lesions of the plexus. Herb Duchenne palsy. Herb Duchenne palsy is your upper trunk lesion, C5 and C6. Upper trunk lesion, Herb Duchenne, C5, C6. Herb Duchenne, C5, C6. Herb Duchenne? C5, C6. Herb Duchenne? C5, C6. Well, what happens? It can be caused by trauma or traumatic birth. This is your upper trunk lesion, your Herb Duchenne, C5, C6, and it leads to your limb hanging by the side, immediately rotated, pronated forearm. So the way I remember this one is that Duchenne has a U in it, upper trunk has a U in it, Klumpke's has an L in it, lower trunk has an L in it. That's how I remember. Which one does what? So let's talk about Klumpke's. Klumpke's is a lower trunk lesion, C8T1. Herb Duchenne was C5C6, Klumpke's is C8T1. Klumpke's, C8T1. Klumpke's? C8T1. Klumpke's? C8T1. Excellent. This Pancoast tumor or traumatic birth. So when you think about Klumpke's, C8T1, you think about RUM, R-U-M, radial, ulnar, and median nerves. Now, because all three nerves are affected, you're going to lose all of your lumbricals and all of your fingers are going to be clawed. So, Klumpke's leads to all fingers clawed. All fingers are clawed in? Klumpke. All fingers are clawed in? Klumpke. And it's from C8 to T1. So, all of your lumbricals, so all of your fingers are clawed, and you're going to also lose the flexors and extensors of your forearm.